where are these falling prices? And we're talking about deflation and deflationary economy, yet where are these falling prices? And my answer has been looking ahead. We're looking ahead at prospects for a deflationary economy, which means in part, perhaps falling prices in a widespread fashion, as well as more importantly, the labor market. And we'll set aside the labor market today. And we'll focus mostly on the price part. Where are the falling prices? It's not just in the future. I'm gonna to have to amend my answer again because we can see falling prices right now as I speak. And not just oil prices, but oil is a big one and it's a good place to start. Mentioned yesterday, Saudi Arabia is going to cut production again. And the oil market initially went, okay, that's a huge production cut. Prices rose precipitously for a couple minutes and then boom, by the end of the day, oil prices were actually lower yesterday than they had been on Friday. They went even lower today in the early morning before rebounding, but are basically right back to where they were to end last week, which is oil prices on the average are heading slightly lower, certainly a lot lower than they were last year. And remember last year, everybody said oil prices were going to be the start of the great inflation, mistaking what the great inflation actually was. But oil prices were a huge component because everybody thought as a contributor to much of the global economy, as one of the key inputs to pretty much everything, higher oil prices meant that it was gonna translate into everything from producer prices to consumer prices, and it was gonna create this upward spiral. So the fact that oil prices today are even ignoring production cuts from the biggest producer around tells you a lot about, well, deflationary potential and not strictly in a price means. But there's others, as I said, this is not just about oil. It has gone even further. I've talked about China's PPI, China's producer and producer prices and factory gate prices. Those are down on both a monthly and year over year basis, pretty substantially year over year. We'll get an update on those in a couple days, Thursday evening. The U.S. producer prices, those have rounded off and some of them are actually heading lower too. We also got another one yesterday, this one from Europe. Europe's producer price index fell by the most on record in the month of April. So as I said, deflation and deflationary economy looking forward, but we can also see it in prices right now. So naturally the question is, okay, oil prices, producer prices, what did those necessarily have to do with consumer prices? Set aside the general economy and demand and all that kind of stuff. Let's focus, is there a relationship between producer prices and consumer prices? Because, I mean, it seems like there should be. We, it, it, economists used to call it the pipeline theory, or essentially that commodity prices would go up, then producers would have to raise their own prices to, uh, to absorb those costs, and then they would pass those along to consumers in the form of consumer price increases. Everything that, that people were saying last year about how 2022 was going to represent the start of the great inflation because of oil, the pipeline theory. And the pipeline theory was largely discredited about 25 years, 25, more than 25 years ago. A um, couple studies in 1995, one of the most cited ones is called Do Producer Prices Lead Consumer Prices? And it found only a weak relationship, really, um, especially before the 1980s. There was another study in 1995, the Commodity Consumer Price Connection Factor Fable. It, sound, it found, again, some predictive power, but mostly before the wave of globalization that swept over the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. But a recent study published last year by the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond says, well, if we focus on modern changes in methodology in the PPI, as well as the post-2008 environment, we find a much stronger correlation between producer prices and consumer prices, and it doesn't have necessarily to do with the pipeline. So we've got falling prices right now, especially on the producer level. We've got deflation, and that continues to point toward deflation in the general sense moving forward. Record fall in European producer prices means a lot more than just falling producer prices in Europe. But first, I'm Jeff, this is Eurodollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're interested, Eurodollar University has memberships available, exclusive video content where we go over what a Eurodollar is, what the Eurodollar system is, more importantly, why money needs to circulate through it 
in order for everything to work, or at least appear to work. We also have research subscriptions available, a daily briefing I put out, put out in partnership with MarketsInsiderPro.com. That's Stephen Van Meter and Tracy Shukart, the three of us together in a single bundle, as well as a daily deep dive analysis where we dive even deeper than we do here on YouTube into all of these things, curves, money, macro, all of it, all the information available for you at our website, Eurodollar.University. Falling producer prices all over the world, including the United States, oil prices going lower and wanting to go even lower from here. That's the contango part of it. What does that mean as far as, okay, great for producer prices, but what about everything else? I'm going to talk about the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond. This was a brief economic brief that was put out in September during the height of the inflation frenzy. It's called building a pipeline between producer and consumer prices. And it again, it's focused especially on the 2008 uh, forward. So really 2009 up until around September of last year. Now we're, we're not looking here to use the producer price index to predict exactly what the PCE deflator is going to do in the future. That's not what we're really interested in. We're really interested in general terms. If the PPI is rising rapidly, does that tell us something specific about what's going to happen in the consumer price part of the economy as well as the general overall economy? Because whether the pipeline theory works or not, it seems like there should be a relationship there. And of course, this paper does find one. But again, we're not looking for precision. We're looking to say if producer prices are, say, going down currently and maybe down sharply in some parts of the world economy, does that tell us something important? Does that tell us something significant about the potential for consumer prices as well as the large economy at large? But again, we're focusing here just on prices. Here's what the paper said. The model finds evidence that the two price indexes do indeed move together over the long run, a relationship that economists call co-integration, with growth rates of PPI having a statistically significant impact on the growth rates of PCE prices and vice versa. In addition, the gap between the two series matters as well. When the gap between the PPI and PCE index strays beyond its usual level, the two series will adjust to normalize that gap over time. Now, they don't say which one is which, which is causes the other, but we do what they do say, what they do say is that there is a relationship between producer prices and consumer prices. And one reason that might be, at least in terms of the index constructions, is that the, the BLS redid its PPI indexes in 2014 because they thought, well, you know, they reorganized it in, in the actual flow of producer, producer work from raw materials to intermediate goods to finished goods into usable stuff that goes into the real economy through wholesaler and retailers. It's known as final demand, intermediate demand system. And that's uh, the authors here in Richmond said that's one important reason why the PPI, which is a more accurate picture of all producer prices, especially since it incorporates more of the services economy, maybe that accounts for why the PPI lost its predictive power or lost its co-relationship with, with consumer price numbers up until recently, let's say, and that this reorganization in 2014 led to more, a, a much better picture of producer prices. Therefore, we can go back and think, okay, now we have a more accurate measure of producer prices. Maybe that accounts for some of the variation. And they say it does. But remember, this, this paper was written in September of 2022 when energy prices, especially in Europe, we're still incredibly high. They only come down a little bit in the, uh, in, in the United States and overall producer prices in China and elsewhere hadn't really turned the corner just yet. And so what the paper's authors were thinking from the perspective of September, 2022, what they thought was, okay, the producer price index, because inflation is still gonna be a problem, according to their definitions, we sh what we should expect is that the PPI would slow down in the early part of 2023 on nothing more than base effects. And unless something substantial changes, what we'll see is the PPI will go back up and be around four, five, maybe five and a half percent. And what that will mean, absent any changes, the consumer price numbers would slow down on base effects too, but not as much, and then converge again with the PPI to be way too high according to the Federal Reserve's target. 
So unless something changed after September, they were saying producer prices will spell nothing good for consumer prices. Fortunately for <clears throat> the Federal Reserve, fortunately for policymakers and economists, something did indeed change. And it did indeed change around September of 2022. September, October into November. We saw a not quite a paradigm shift, but the first step in a transition period going from the supply shock version of consumer and producer price increases to what will be the inevitable conclusion to the supply shock in the deflationary recession. We did see that, especially in producer prices. US PPI, as I've mentioned before, we've gone over this, so we don't need to go through the numbers, all of the numbers, but you can clearly see the US PPI has rolled over. Since November, the PPI for final demand goods is down very slightly, but at least flattened out. The PPI for finished goods was down 1% since November, falling prices, and the PPI for commodities overall is down 2%. Remember, this is globally synchronized. It's not just about the U.S. It's not just about China. It's not just about Europe. So if we see producer prices falling in the U.S. or the producer prices falling in China, it's likely to be the same everywhere else. And as more and more producer prices start, start to fall in the big economies, everything else is going to fall in line with that, including eventually consumer prices, which is our point here. So back to what I said in the beginning. Europe, Europe's producer prices... They, those fell by the most on record. Now, records only go back to 1999, but still, we're talking about more than two decades of data, almost 25 years of data, 3.2% decrease month over month in the month of April. And that is actually the third time over the last seven months where we've had a round 3% month over month decline, going back to September and October. On an annual basis, Europe's PPI is now up just 1%, which is the least since January 2021. And going back to September, Europe's PPI is down 11%. And as prices are falling on the producer level, that does seem to tell us something in general terms about what to expect for consumer prices. So as I say, deflation that we can actually see today in a limited sense, pointing us forward to more deflation and more deflationary economy potential moving on. That's the oil price signal. And speaking of oil prices, oil prices, yes, were responsible for the bulk of the decline, for the record decline in the Europe producer price index in April because energy prices were down 10% month over month. And I know most people, oh, that's, that's energy. That's not inflation. Except everybody last year said oil prices and energy were inflation. And now conveniently they say, well, now that energy prices are falling, that's not inflation. That has nothing to do with it. But even so, let's look at the core PPI. The core PPI in Europe, down 0.1% month over month. So it wasn't just energy prices. Energy prices fell a lot more. But the core PPI in Europe, those prices have softened and flattened out. And that's, that's the second negative month over the last six months, too. So there is a rolling over in core producer prices in Europe, just as in the United States, with energy prices leading the deflationary charge all across the producer price segment of the global economy. Because again, globally synchronized. This is not just about the US, China, or Europe. And that's what oil prices are telling us. The oil prices are telling us that this is a global problem. And oil prices don't just contribute to PPI indices and then eventually CPI indices. They are the fundamental cross currents between supply, demand, and money. As we know from the Saudi experience over the last couple days, and really OPEC back in March when OPEC decided they were going to cut production, what happened to the oil market? The oil market initially rose and then it came back down again after a couple weeks because Demand and money are bigger concerns now than even tight supplies and low global inventories. Demand is falling, and we can see that in any number of places all around the world, including the United States, 
talking about the ISMs, non-manufacturing index. Factory orders here in the U.S. are declining too. They're down sharply, especially for consumer goods. I think they're off 7%. Big change in the economy last year that's showing up in producer prices. And even if it isn't in consumer prices yet, we're looking at deflation moving forward. One final point, uh, we'll go back to Europe here because it's, you know, Germany is a big key trading hub, not just for Europe, but the go entire global economy, which is what we're really talking about with all of these things. Producer prices that are falling because of weak demand. Germany's factory orders. Germany's factory orders were down absolutely huge in the month of March. They were down almost 11% month over month in March. Huge reduction a lot of that was large orders for uh, aircraft and capital goods, big, big, big projects and things like that. But even ex excluding those orders, uh, factory orders in March were down almost 8% month over month. So a huge decline in factory demand and much of it coming from, much of the decline in demand coming from outside of Germany. So factory orders were expected to rebound in April because, I mean, that's just how things go. You have a huge decline then things come back and then they go down and, you have that sawtooth pattern. Analysts were expecting factory orders to rise 3%, a little bit of a rebound after 11% decline, but instead factory orders actually fell a little bit more, 0.4% more month over month in April. Not a huge decline, but following a huge decline, it it is a huge decline. Orders for consumer goods were down 2.5%, another 2.5% month over month. Domestic orders actually increased in Germany, a little bit of a rebound there, which simply meant, and my major point here in bringing this up, factory orders from outside of Germany fell another 1.8% in April. Consistent with oil prices, consistent with now falling and maybe even sharply falling producer prices, pointing toward the deflationary economy with deflation that we can actually see today in widespread important fashion. And if those researchers in Richmond are right, then the general idea, the general direction for falling producer prices tells us that relatively soon, one or two things has to happen. Either consumer prices are going to decline to, to match producer prices, or at least fall down. The CPI rates are gonna, are gonna drop considerably, or the opposite is going to happen. Producer prices are going to suddenly accelerate to match the inflationary projections of all the people who said the great 2022, 2022 represented the start of great inflation too. And with oil prices struggling, even with uh, Saudi production cuts, you can see that's not likely to happen. Instead, more and more and more, we see everything moving in that direction, which is why I continue to say, when people ask, where is this deflationary economy? Where's this deflation? It's in front of us. I'm Jeff. This is Eurodollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, huge thank you. Eurodollar University research subscribers, marketsinsiderpro.com research subscribers, and Eurodollar University members. Thank you all. And until next time, take care.